Hey, aren't you going to the uh, Azoth launch event? Azroth launch event? Hmm. Bro, what are you doing? Can't you see? I'm getting ready for the Azeroth launch event. Azeroth launch event? What are you talking about, man? You just said there's a launch event for Azeroth, so I'm going as an orc. Yeah, I see that. But this is the ROG Azoth keyboard launch event, not World of Warcraft. What are you doing? For the Horde! Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. So Asus ROG is launching a brand new gaming keyboard, and it's called the Azoth. What the heck is Azoth, you ask? Well, it's another name for Mercury, the planet or element, I guess. But what makes this gaming keyboard interesting is that it's not like the typical gaming keyboards, like what we've seen with their Sculpt or Claymore lineup, right? Or even something like a Corsair or Razer. It actually looks more like a custom or enthusiast mechanical keyboard. That was actually the intention. While the Azoth is still a very much gaming keyboard with very much gaming features, ROG decided to make it look more like a custom 75% with features and capabilities that you typically see in the more hardcore side of the hobby. So with the price range in the $200 to $250, can the Azoth be that perfect keyboard for gamers that want to dabble into customs? Well, kind of. So let's check it out. A quick disclaimer, yes, this video is sponsored by Asus ROG, and they did provide me the sample of the Azoth to review, but the opinions and the shenanigans are of my own and mine only. The Azoth features the same kind of packaging you find in ROG's other keyboard lineup. The sample I have features their NX red mechanical switches, which is essentially like any other red switches out there. You got this picture of the actual keyboard right in the center of the box, so you know exactly what you're getting into. And finally, the logo for Speed Nova, ROG's fast wireless connection. Inside the box, you'll obviously find the keyboard as well wrapped in this bag. But in addition, another box full of accessories. What kind, you ask? Oh, some interesting stuff that you don't typically find in pre-made gamer keyboard boxes, like keycap and switch pullers, switch opener, brushes, and what? Lube? Crytox 205 to be clear. I guess they did some homework on what lube to use. So this starts to paint the picture a little bit more, doesn't it? So right off the bat, the Azoth looks like a 75% custom mechanical keyboard. It is a compact form factor that still provides all the necessary keys that a gamer needs, like the Afro and the Arrow Cluster. It also includes the screen right here, which we will get into more later. The overall construction of the Azoth is interesting in that it features an aluminum upper housing and a plastic lower housing. According to Asus, this is due to the 2.4 GHz speed Nova and Bluetooth wireless functions of the keyboard and making the entire keyboard made out of aluminum reduce the signal fidelity. And it wasn't very good for a quick low latency connection. So hey, you know what? I have this QK75 that is also full aluminum and has wireless. So I'm gonna test that theory out later. And like other ROG keyboards, you got the flippy feet in three adjustable heights to suit your needs. Overall, out of all the gaming keyboards from big brands I've seen so far, this is probably the most pleasing to my eyes at least. The 75% form factor is a great balance between size and function, and it's not the typical flat aluminum low profile design that most gaming keyboards seem to be kind of embracing these days. Now, similar to the ROG Scope and the Claymore series, the Azoth also features a PBT Double Shot Shine Through keycap set, but this time in cherry-like profile. And there are no odd-sized keycaps also, thank goodness. Underneath, the Azoth actually uses standard MX style switches, and they're hot swappable. So unlike some of the recent Scope and Claymore series I looked at, they use those weird four-post keycaps on boxy optical switches, this is more standard. This is one of the major factors for its customization ability as well. While the PCB is north facing, I mean, gaming keyboards stress RGB, right? But there are plenty of long pole switches out there now that will allow the Azoth to work with cherry profile keycaps as well. But wait a minute, but what about the stock configuration? 
Well, the stock NX Red that Azoth comes with, it's not a long pole, but somehow it works together with the cherry profile that it comes with in north facing no problem. So I also noticed that the stock NX Reds that it comes with also works with other cherry profile keycaps like the PBT fan stuff from KBD fans. However, I did notice a little bit of interference with the GMK set. So with the GMK set, use the long stem pole switches and you're good to go. So ROG claims that the mounting structure of the Azoth is like a custom keyboard. It's gasket mounted. Looking at the diagram, it does indeed seem that way. But if you're looking for that squishy, bouncy keyboard experience, you will not get that with the Azoth. It's still pretty comfortable, you know, the typing feels good, but far from what you notice from the ultra flex craze that hits all the customs lately. Still better than what you get from like something like a GMMK Pro though. And yes, the screen. Probably the coolest thing about the Azoth. It's customizable with ROG software, the Armory Crate, to add in different designs, or you can actually use it to be more functional as well. Like for example, display critical computer diagnostics like CPU speed, GPU temperature, and etc. This is something that I do find quite helpful in the case that you kind of want to monitor your hardware during like a heavy gaming session, or for me, during heavy rendering. And the crazy thing is that it'll display real-time diagnostic information even over wireless connection. In addition, you have this rocker on the side that helps you move through the menus, change the RGB patterns, control the OLED screen, or just adjust volume. Very nice touch. I really like this feature. The screen works together with the ROG Armory Crate software, and you can even modify what you display on the OLED screen itself. You have the option of swapping out to various different animations provided, or you could even customize by uploading your own animation in here as well. Or you can just add a banner design that you could select from and add in your own messaging like I did. You also got some fun ones like the display audio spectrum one to the music you play. And finally, as mentioned before, you have access to all the system hardware information like CPU, GPU, and more. Now, the Armory Crate also allows you to make changes to your key mapping, like a true custom, right? And switch through different RGB settings, or you could also customize them as you go as well. Finally, you can also use the software to change out like what the rocker control knob does. All in all, it's a pretty nice companion tool and makes the overall Azoth more pleasurable to use. Now, before we start to really tear down the Azoth, let's take a listen to how this keyboard sounds completely stock with the NX Reds right out of the box. So what do you think? Overall, the sound of the keyboard is pretty clean, but it definitely sounds like the board is like filled to the brim with stuff. Overall, no ping or hollowness, and the keyboard doesn't sound cheap or anything like that, other than the clack from the red switches. You can also opt for like the brown or the blue, but I prefer linear for gaming, so red's fine. But what is actually very surprising to me are the stabs. It features the ROG proprietary stabs, but my experience with this stab has been generally good now and from the previous lineup as well. So then, what is inside? Let's find out. Once you undo all the screws, you can just lift up the upper frame and you have full access to the inside of the keyboard. First up, you can now see that the gasket structure of the Azoth is like right here. It uses these little silicone jackets that a lot of late customs have been utilizing. So they're located both front and back and side to side. Here's a closer look at the silicone gaskets right here. Once you take them out, you can also see that the bottom portion of the silicone is fatter. Now, once you remove the plate and PCB assembly, you can start to see the minute details of the Azoth. First of all, the plate is steel. It's similar to what Keychron did with their Q-series boards. And you can get a closer look at the ROG stabs here right now. Almost looks like a plate-mounted stab here. It's kind of like a hybridized Colstar. And here's a closer look at the gasket tab also. As mentioned before, there's a thick silicone plate dampener layer, as you can see right here. Once you remove the plate dampener, you can see the PCB with all the gamer RGB per key. Underneath that, you can see the TTC hot swap sockets that the Azoth comes with. They're very similar to the KO and Gateron, so no issues there whatsoever. Now, something I found very interesting. 
Even though the keyboard comes with ROG specific stabs, the Azad can actually use standard PCB screw and stabs. That was actually a very nice surprise. So if you want to use different stabs, you sure can. Now let's move on to the lower case. The first thing you'll notice is this massively thick poron sheet. ROG mentioned that they wanted to make this keyboard as quiet as possible, so they stuffed it with dampening. Like underneath the poron, you have this thick silicone pad as well. Now with the foam removed, you can actually see the gigantic daughter port with what seems like the biggest wireless chipset I've seen on a keyboard. So I guess this is a Speed Nova. Then you got a sizable battery right here that ROG claims 2000 hours of use. I'm not gonna test that, I'm just gonna take their word for it. Finally, the OLED screen. Everything is then connected together with a bunch of ribbon cables. Now I figured, what can I do to improve this even more and make it even closer to a custom keyboard? So I removed the lower pour on sheet. Why do you need so much dampening for a plastic bottom case? You don't really got ping or anything like that. So, And I also wanted to make this louder. Plus all that pour on also impedes the flex of the board. Then I kept the silicone gaskets for the top and bottom, but I removed the ones on the sides to increase flex as well. Then when I put everything back together, I replaced the stock NX reds with lubed hamster linears, the prototypes actually from KBD fans. The production ones look different. They look like this right here, right? Kind of like a cream banded hamster, I guess. Then I replaced the keycaps with PBT fans purple, which I thought looked awesome with this gunmetal gray top. Remember that little flex mod I did? Check it out. It's not crazy, but it does help the Azoth achieve more bounce. At this point, the only thing I feel that keeps this thing from being like a custom or more of an enthusiast level keyboard are probably north facing switches, but a gamer keyboard without gamer RGB will probably not work in this demographic, so I get it. I get why it's north facing. So then how does this sound? Let's find out. Honestly, this sounds so much better to me. It has a very clean and poppy sound signature now, and removing the pour on foam helps this keyboard come alive a little bit more as well. There's no ping, no hollowness, so why shove more foam in there than necessary, right? Plus, the overall look of the keyboard with the per poach is actually very nice. I really like it. So I really love how this turned out right now. Now, before we wrap it up, let's visit the whole Speed Nova wireless thing, shall we? So I wanted to see if ROG's claim of needing the wireless fidelity was true. Does Speed Nova make that big of a difference? Surprisingly, the answer is yes. So let's take a look at this chart right here. So I put the Azoth against the QK75 wireless with both using the 2.4 gigahertz receiver in a friendly keyboard input speed test. The results are pretty clear that the Azoth wireless beats out the QK75 wireless hands down in terms of how quickly the computer registers a key press. But what is even more surprising is this. The Azoth has the same latency in wireless mode as in wired, like dead same. Which means that for gamers, the wireless system in this keyboard is robust enough to be competitive with the wired board. So what the heck is the Azoth? Is it a gaming keyboard? Is it an enthusiast keyboard? Well. Here's my opinion. At the end of the day, the Azoth is a gaming keyboard. It has all the features of a gaming keyboard, like the ultra low latency wireless connection, the macro on the fly, the profiles, the windows and Mac mode, and the gamer centric OLED screen. Oh, don't forget the RGB. However, the Azoth is also unique in that it embraced some of the features available from the custom keyboard community, like hot swap switches, like gasket mounting, I mean, the PCB even supports both 3-pin and 5-pin. Ability to take on screw and stabs, cherry profile keycaps, and standard sizing, thank you, for easy swap out. Customization capabilities, you can either remove or add in the dampeners to your liking. I mean, it even comes with switch lubing station and Crytox 205 for crying out loud. So, is the Azoth perfect? Nah, nothing really is, right? I really wish they figured out a way to make the bottom also aluminum. That would have made this thing feel so premium. 
I also wish they increased the height of the upper case a little bit so that it covers the seams a little bit better. And maybe go south facing. I know, I know. Like, at this point, I'm just turning this into a full-on custom, right? But can you imagine? A custom enthusiast kind of keyboard with really good gaming features and ultra-fast wireless connection? That would be awesome. So if you typically have a custom keyboard user here and a gaming keyboard user here, the AZA is like this little space overlap here. And maybe some of these other ones do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Essentially, ROG made an enthusiast level gaming keyboard that allows gamers to also get a taste of higher end customs. You know what? That is not a bad thing. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.